Hi gang, it's sexy. <laughs> Man, just finished up the uh, 1100 turn, the 11 o'clock in the morning turn in uh, Hardy at high tide. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not seeing how the, conf <laughs> the Confederates pulled this crushing blow to the, the right flank of the Union line. Um, I mean, I keep trying to attack and push as best I can without killing their fatigue, even though I am pushing their fatigue a little bit. Poor Shepard's brigade from Rousseau's uh, division. He is really, this guy has fought hard, man. He came over here and he's just gone nonstop. And he's, he's checked uh, pieces of Claiborne and, and he's checked two brigades from McCown trying to go in here. Um, of course, his units weren't beat up. They rolled up through the, the woods here and just could have been better timing than to get up in here. Of course, Rousseau has also been fortunate enough to draw... Uh, see, he didn't this turn, but Rousseau, or Shepard, no, wait, hold on. Rousseau is a plus one commander, and then their uh, uh, wing commander is Thomas, who's a plus one commander. So as long as those two are within range of each other, they're, you know, you draw a two chit, and that's really the only division from uh, Thomas's uh, wing that's on the map, well, until now. He throws that plus one at Rousseau, and then Rousseau has a plus one as long as his brigade commanders are in, you know, uh, uh, in command status. They're going to get four draws, and that's what Rousseau's been doing. He's been getting four draws, so that helps. Now, granted, like the brigade back here, who is, you know, the reason they're Scribner, the only reason they got a zero is I pushed them one extra uh, uh, thing in their first turn, one extra um. Oh, activation, all right. But uh, all they've done now is sit there. They're waiting. They're, they're the hole pluggers, which as soon as I can get Davis' division, what's left of them, out of the way completely, they'll fill that gap, okay? Uh, this brigade sitting up here. Where's their commander at? That is Beatty, okay? Yeah, Ned Beatty or Warren. I wonder which one. Uh, they're really doing fine. You see they've, they've had no losses, and they've hit... Cleburne in the face right there, just sitting inside this, this tree line here. But Shepard has done most of the work. Um, let's see how much longer he can hold on. His units are still in pretty good shape. Cleburne and McCown have got to keep trying. Now, McCown has hit this cavalry over here, and you can see he shoved some of uh, uh, Kenneth's, these are mostly independent type units, I think, back here. And then Zahn's cavalry is sitting through here. Um, we'll see. Those carbines at point blank range are pretty, they're pretty devastating, so... And dismounted cavalry is just like infantry. So now you got these carbines firing at a plus two at point blank as long as they're not disrupted. Yeah. So now, other than cavalry, which when the cavalry comes on for the Confederacy on this turn, they come in with a fatigue level of four. So I don't know how much use they're going to be. Whereas Crittenden and the left wing, he starts to show up with a massive stuff. Uh, it looks like he's got pretty much a full division get ready to come on the map somewhere, I'm sure, over there, all right? Now, here's the dilemma. Cheatham, for the Confederacy, who's got this mass of forces right here coming into the fight, he only drew one activation. Same thing with Sheridan. Sheridan was only able to draw one activation, and Sheridan's a plus commander too, all right? So, he's a right-wing commander, which belongs to McCook, who's sitting right here. McCook is a minus one uh, wing commander. So <laughs> Sheridan's going to lose either way with him. So it's going to sort of back. His plus and, and uh, McCook's minus sort of counterbalance each other. Now, anybody else in the right wing and their divi the division commanders within range of McCook during the efficiency stuff, they're going to suffer even more. So at least Sheridan has a chance. I mean, I'm wondering, does Cook, what's McCook's reverse side? Is Johnson, he is no better. So, I don't know. You know, I've, I've always heard that this he wasn't the best. I mean, the only good commander on the board for the Union is Thomas, anyhow. So even Crittenden, let's see, Crittenden is a minus one, too. So maybe that's where this flank failed was because of the four commanders that the Union had on the board. But it's interesting, you're going to have all three wing commanders on this map, on this little one map fight over here, down in this corner, all right? So, 1200 turn, we're gonna, you know, hopefully the efficiencies come up, because Cheatham has two of his own brigades, 
and two brigades from um, another, where are they from? From, da, 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 where's he at, where's he at, where's he at? It looks like he's got two from his and then two from Withers. Uh, they're all under his command. So he's got four brigades under his command. And while they had a little success with what was initially at the start over here, well, the battery, I mean, the Union just can't get them out of there. Uh, the Union has lost five total batteries. They lost another one right here that, that I couldn't get the Sheridan's boys back to get on top of it to recover it. But Negley, these guys over here, they can't come west of this hex or they're only going to get one activation, which they're only getting one anyhow. I'm not going to matter. In the slower pin, they hit these guys in the flank, so that might slow that down. The problem is I can't get these guys. I was able to get them to attack, but both of them went into attack. I see this one went into attack, and he had this. He he changed and stayed. This guy failed. He didn't get into attack mode, so I, I got to hope that I can get them into. Well, I will because Cheatham's sitting right here, so he'll get them into attack mode with this new uh, division order space. Um, and that's that's just about it. I mean, there's just not. I mean, Claiborne might have a little bit more. But we're going to be fighting with collapsed and BCE'd, and, and the whole premise of this game for victory conditions is based around combat effectiveness at uh, brigade and division level. That's where your points are going to come from. All right, well, hey, there you go. we got the Pioneers coming on, and they're a massive unit with very good high morales, too. And then another, uh, another left-wing um, brigade coming in there. So, yeah, we'll see. I, I, right now, my brain says there's no way. These guys are going to get swatted. There's going to be no more Cleburne and McMa McNown or McCown. I'm feeling after this turn, they're going to be just they're going to be just a total wreck. So, but we'll push and we'll try and hopefully something. We get a good fight over here between. I was hoping it was going to be this turn between Sheridan and Cheatham over here. So, all right, there you go, dead of winter, Murfreesboro, Hardy at high tide, the 2.0 scenario, I think it is. We're getting after it, and oh, we're having a blast with it. Only thing, the only thing about GPACW that still irks me is, of course, I put the maps under plexiglass, and then you put silky smooth cardboard counters, and you stack them four, five, six, seven, eight high, and yeah, you're going to knock them over, and then you cuss at yourself, and then you rebuild the stacks, and you put them in there, and you get back to having fun. All right? Nothing better than GBACW, guys. All right, let's get this posted. We'll talk to you all shortly.